You know, in the last couple of years, Mr. President, the rate of change we've all experienced has been nothing less than extraordinary. We can go to the bank and we can take a picture, instead of going to the bank, I should say, of our check and deposit it, right? We don't need to have a map anymore. We just have these devices on our telephones or in our cars to tell us where to go, and they talk to us you know, always in a, in, a, in a great voice. And so what Assemblymember Dubovnik is seeking to do here is to start the process with the Department of Motor Vehicles of where we can digitize your driver's license. It doesn't do it. It requires a study. And to start the process, I respectfully ask for your support of this measure. Members, the better discussion on this item, the better discussion. Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? No. no Bates? No. no Bell? Aye. Berryhill? No. Block? Aye. Canella? De Leon? Aye. Fuller? No. no Gaines? Galjoni? Aye. Glazer? Aye. Hall? Aye. Aye. Hancock? Aye. Aye. Hernandez? Aye. Aye. Hertzberg? Aye. Aye. Hill? Aye. Aye. Hueso? I Huff, no Jackson. I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, Lou, I <coughs> McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, no Morell, no Win, I Nelson, no Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, no Stone, no Vidak. No, Wykowski. Aye. aye. Walk. Walk, aye. Please call the absent members. Canella. Aye. aye. Gaines. No. No. Leva. Aye. Aye. Ayes 28, noes 12. The measure passes. Moving on to item 180. Senators, Senator Hancock. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 433 by Assembly Member Chu and Ackling to Public Social Services. Senator Hancock. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and members, I'm presenting AB 433 uh, on behalf of Assembly Member Chu. Uh, this seeks to ensure that families receiving CalWORKs benefits are not faced with additional immediate financial hardship when they lose a child. Because there is nothing in current law that automatically allows parents participating in welfare to work activities, to be exempt from participation if their child dies, parents often return to their welfare to work activity or employment right away out of fear they'll lose their CalWORKs grant and won't be able to continue to provide for their families. This bill will ensure that a parent isn't sanctioned for not meeting welfare to work requirements for a month, the month in which a child dies and the month after the child has died. It will maintain the grant for assistance and um, also will make sure that parents who experience such a tragic loss receive information from their counties about mental health services that may be available. The bill uh, is anticipated to fortunately only apply to a very limited number of families. It has received no, no votes and I would ask for your I vote. Members, debater discussion on this item. Debater discussion. Seeing and hearing none. Is there objection to using a unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 40, no zero. The measure passes. Moving on to file item 184, Senator Allen. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 810 by Assembly Member Ridley Thomas and Ackling to State Highways. Senator Allen. Mr. President and Senators, uh, AB 810 would authorize the California Transportation Commission to relinquish part of State Highway Route 187 and State Highway Route 1 to the City of Los Angeles. The portion of State Route 187 known as Venice Boulevard has been selected as part of the city's Green Streets Initiative, which aims to activate public spaces, provide economic revitalization, increase public safety, and enhance local culture through roadway and streetscape improvements. This project will be used as a model for future improvements along additional sections of the Venice Corridor. The portion of State Route 1, known as Lincoln Boulevard, is an important north-south thoroughfare through the west side of LA. Uh, the city of Los Angeles envisions a series of roadway improvements for this corridor. Local residents hope to see Lincoln Boulevard treated more as a local street than a highway, with special attention paid to safety issues for people traveling by foot or bike, in addition to those traveling by car or bus. This is a support of the local folks, and I ask you for an I vote. 
Members, to better discussion on this item, to better discussion. Seeing hearing none, is there objection to using a unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 40, no zero, the measure passes. Moving on, members, to file item 185, Senator Leva. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 967 by Assembly Member Williams, an act relating to post-secondary education. Senator Leva. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, colleagues. AB 967 will requ require California's post-secondary education system to adopt and carry out a uniform process for disciplinary proceedings related to claims of sexual assault as defined by the institution's adopted sexual assault policies. This bill will also require campuses to publicly report and disclose campus adjudication outcomes for sexual assault offenses. The data collected by this bill will be essential to help determine how to best allocate resources to address the ongoing problem of campus sexual assault. Greater data transparency sends a strong message to both students and the general public that our universities are taking campus sexual assault seriously. AB 967 will instill greater public trust by providing clear and consistent campus adjudication outcomes and transparency in reporting. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Members, the better discussion on this item. The better discussion. Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Aye. Anderson? Aye. Bates? Aye. Aye. Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? Aye. Block? Aye. Aye. Canella? Aye. Aye. De Leon? Aye. Aye. Fuller? Gaines, Calcioni, I Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, I Morell. Wynn, Nelson, Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, I Stone, Vidak, Stone I, Vidak, I Wykowski, I Walk, Walk I. Call the absent members. Nelson I, Wynn I, An Fuller I, Anderson, No, Gaines, Huff, I Morell. Ayes 37, noes 1, measure passes. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, we're going to move back to file item 182 and 183. That is file item 182 by Senator Leno, followed by 183, Senator Berryhill. Senator Leno, are you prepared to take up this item? Secretary, please call the roll. Assembly Bill 578 by Assembly please Member read. Lowe, an act relating to employment. Senator Leno. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, this bill will bring transparency, always a good thing, to the Cal OSHA Standards Board. One of the board's responsibilities is to oversee variance requests. This bill will bring transparency by requiring that the workers who actually do the work that are relative to the variance requested are given notice that there is a variance request and that they are allowed to participate in the hearing. Fair and of safety for those workers. I ask for your I vote. Members, the better discussion on this item. The better discussion. Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Anderson? No. no. Bates? No. no. Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? Aye. No. Block? Aye. Aye. Canella? No. no. De Leon? Aye. Aye. Fuller? Aye. No. Gaines? Calcioni? Aye. Aye. Glazer? No. Hall. Hancock. I. Hernandez. I. Hertzberg. I. Hill. Hueso. I. Huff. No. Jackson. I. Lada. I. Leno. I. Leva. I. Lou. I. McGuire. Mendoza. I. Mitchell. Monning. I. Morlock. No. Morell. No. Wynn. No, Nielsen. No, no Pan. Aye. I, Pavley. Aye. I, Roth. No, no. Runner. Aye. No, Stone. Aye. No, Vidak. Aye. No, Wykowski. Wolk. Aye. Hall, aye. Call the absent members. Allen. 
I, Gaines, no, Hill, I, McGuire, Mitchell, I, Wykowski, I. Ayes 23, no 16, the measure passes. Moving on to item 183, Senator Berry, Berryhill. Secretary, please read. File item 183. Assembly Bill 667 by Assemblymember Wagner and Act Lane to Securities. Senator Berryhill. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Members, this is a, uh, this is a very common sense and a bill that I think is, is, is very much needed. It is widely recognized among business participants that many individuals and entities act as finders in the state of California in connection with securities transactions. Finders generally mean persons who introduce issuers and investors to each other without negotiating on behalf of either party. Now, they're often critical to the success of capital raising efforts to start up companies and other smaller companies. Now, at present time, there are no clear guidelines in state or federal law regarding the lawful employment of these finders. This lack of certainty jeopardizes finders and the businesses which rely on them for crucial funding as well as other investors. It also impedes the state's ability to regulate finders, which we all hate that, and clouds really does cloud accountability. This bill, uh, AB 667, will promote market transparency and accountability, protect investors, and ensure increased investor protections and clear regulatory guidelines. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Members, debate or discussion on this item? Seeing and hearing none, is there objection to using a unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 39, no zero, the measure passes. Members, I'm gonna announce the next five items with their floor managers. File item 187, Senator Hill, 188, Senator Allen, 191, Senator Leva, 193, Senator Bell, and 194, Senator Mendoza. File item 187, pass on file. File item 188, Senator Allen. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1200 by Assemblymember Gordon an act relating to the Political Reform Act of 1974. Senator Allen. Members, uh, California voters enacted the Political Reform Act in part to ensure that the activities of lobbyists would be registered and their finances disclosed. To serve this goal, the Political Reform Act requires lobbying firms and parties employing a lobbyist to report their legislative and regulatory activities. This structure is working and is not overly burdensome. Now, lobbying related to procurement contract decisions by state agencies is not covered by the Political Reform Act, despite the state authorizing over $11 billion in procurement contracts last year. In light of this substantial expenditure of taxpayer dollars, the public should have the ability to see who is attempting to influence the procurement process. If we require disclosure on all legislative matters, why wouldn't we require disclosure on billions of dollars worth of state procurement contracts. Accordingly, AB 1200 adds go governmental procurement to the Political Reform Act. This simply means that lobbyists would, would be required to disclose work done on procurement in their regular filings and that pr the proverbial hired gun outside consultant registers as a lobbyist if they're paid $2,000 or more per month to lobby on procurement contracts. It should be noted that nothing in this bill would prohibit conversations between lobbyists and officials involved in procurement. Rather, disclosure of the activities provides transparency, assurance that the process is fair, and a means to detect and prosecute improper activity. In addition, 18 states as well as the federal government already require lobbyists to report procurement lobbying activity. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Members, debate or discussion on this item? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen, I, Anderson. Bates, Bell, I. Berryhill, Block, I. Canella, De Leon, Fuller, Gaines, Galgioni, I. Glazer, I. Hall, I. Hancock, I. Hernandez, I. Hertzberg, Hill, I. Hueso, Huff, Jackson, I. Lada, I. Leno, I. Leva, I. Lou, I. McGuire, I. Mendoza, 
Aye, Mitchell. Aye, Monning. Morlock. Morell. Wynn. Nilsson. Pan. Aye, Pavley. Aye, Roth. Aye, Runner. Stone. Vidak. Wachowski. Aye, Wolk. Wolk, aye. Call the absent members. Anderson. Bates. Berryhill. Canella. De Leon. Fuller, Gaines, Hertzberg, Hueso, Huff, Monning, Morlock, Morell, Wynn, Nilsson, Runner, Stone, Vidak. Senator Allen moves the call. Moving on to file item 191, Senator Leva. Pass on file, item 193, Senator Bell. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1465 by Assemblymember Gordon and Ackerling to Vehicles. Senator Bell. Thank you, Mr. President. Senators, this bill uh, will help California uh, issue driver's licenses and identification cards in compliance with the federal Real ID Act. Uh, this Real ID Act established federal requirements for state-issued driver's license and identifying cards to be federally accepted. Once these requirements, one of these requirements is providing proof of residency. Failure to comply with the real ID would mean that we could no longer use our state ID cards to board a commercial aircraft or enter a federal building. Instead, California would be required to um, present a valid passport or two other forms of acceptable uh, identification. Therefore, we uh, request a I vote on AB 1465. Members, to better discussion on this item, to better discussion. Seeing and hearing none, is there objection to use the Senator Nielsen? Mr. President, a question the author. Senator Bell, would you like to take a question? Uh, yeah, Senator Pardon. Bell, what form of verification of residence does it require? Does the bill specify uh, some official form like a, a, a contract for a, an apartment or a rental, a lease, a, a, a property uh, uh, identification that's been recorded in the county? What, what would be required? Well, I believe, I believe it's the same requirements that the federal government requires, so it, it can, it's consistent with the federal law requirements for proof of residency. And okay. what those are, I have no idea. Yeah, I, I, I might need to check on that because okay. you don't want anybody to just be able to come in and say, hey, this is my address and have no verification and no substantiation of that. Uh, I trust federal law does not allow that, but thank you. Thank you. Members, additional debate or discussion on this item? Seeing hearing now, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. I. Anderson. I. Bates. Bell. I. Berryhill, I. Block, I. Canella, I. De Leon, Fuller, I. Gaines, Galgioni, Glazer, Hall, I. Hancock, I. Hernandez, I. Hertzberg, I. Hill, I. Hueso, Huff, I. Jackson, I. Lada, I. Leno, I. Leva, I. Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, I Morell, I Wynn, I Nilsson, I Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wachowski, I Wolk. Wolk, I. Call the absent members. Bates, I. Gaines, I. De Leon. Galgiani, Glazer, I, Hueso. Galgiani, I. I is 38, no zero, the measure passes. Members, we are gonna be putting measures on call to allow members to return from the assembly. We are gonna continue with File item 194, Senator Mendoza, that's passed. Member, the, members, the next five items, uh, 
that are up are 195, Senator Allen, 196, Senator Mitchell, 197, Senator Mitchell, 198, Senator Jackson, and 189, Pan. Starting with 195, Senator Allen. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 428 by Assembly Member Nazarian and Acclimate to Taxation to take Senator, it immediately tax levy. Senator Allen. So in January of 1994, Senators, a magnitude 6.7 earthquake struck the San Fernando Valley, resulting in one of the most costly natural disasters in U.S. history. In addition to the tragic loss of life, the Northridge quake caused over $20 billion in damages, $49 billion in economic losses, and an unprecedented homeowner's insurance crisis. For the 10 million people who experienced this disaster, it remains powerful in our collective consciousness. Uh, yet more than 20 years later, our state still stands underprepared for the next catastrophic quake. And scientists tell us that it's not a matter of if, but when. AB 428 establishes a five-year, 30% tax credit for the cost of seismic retrofit construction of qualified at-risk buildings. The bill caps the total amount of credits to $60 million over five years. And through a process of local certification, the Franchise Tax Board would administer the credit on a first-come, first-served basis. Hazard mitigation not only prevents the loss of life, it's also a proven and sound investment. On average, every dollar spent on hazard mitigation provides communities with $4 in future benefits. With that, I respectfully ask for my vote. Members, debate better discussion on this item? To better discussion. Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Aye. Aye Anderson. Bates. Aye. Aye Bell. Aye Berryhill. Aye Block. Aye Canella. Aye De Leon. Fuller. Aye Gaines. Galgioni. Aye Glazer. Aye Hall. I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Wesso, Huff, Jackson, I Huff I, Lada, I I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, No Morell, Win. I. Nilsson, I. Pan, I. Pavley, Roth, I. Runner, I. Stone, I. Vidak, I. Wykowski, I. Walk. Senator Walk Allen moves a call. Commissioner. Moving on to file item 196, Senator Mitchell. Pass on file. 197, Senator Mitchell. Pass on file. File item 198, Senator Jackson. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 15 by Assemblymember Holden and Acclaim to Civil Actions. Senator Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. I'm pleased to present AB 15 on behalf of Assemblymember Holden. This bill aligns the statute of limitations for human rights abuses with current federal law. When victims of torture, war crimes, trafficking, and crimes against humanity file cases in state court, they must assert tort claims such as wrongful death, assault, or battery. In California, these human rights abuses carry a two-year statute of limitations, which is often too short to gather the evidence necessary to ensure that victims of these abuses get a fair trial. By adopting this bill, we will help to ensure that victims of human rights violations are afforded their right to due process. Lastly, this bill has received unanimous bipartisan support throughout the legislative process and has no known opposition. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Members, to bear discussion on this item, to bear discussion. Standing here now, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. aye Bates. Aye. aye Bell. Aye, Berryhill, I Block, I Canella, I De Leon, Fuller, I Gaines, Galgioni, I Glazer, I Hall, Hancock, Hall I, Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire. I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, I Morell, I Wynn, I Nilsson, 
I Pan, I Pavley, Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Walk. Walk I. Call the House of Members. De Leon, Gaines, Wesso, Pavley. Sorry, Senator Jackson moves a call. Members, we are on file item 199. Senator Patton, Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 389 by Assembly Member Chow and Ackling to Health Facilities. Senator Patton. Thank you, Mr. President. Senators, yeah. AB 389 requires hospitals to make language assistant policies available to, on their website in English and in other most commonly spoken languages in the hospital service area. Additionally, it requires the Department of Public Health to post these policies online. Current law requires each general acute care hospital to annually adopt a policy for providing language assistance to limited English proficiency patients and to report that policy to the Department of Public Health. However, hospitals currently submit their policies and procedures on paper to the respective DPH licensing and certification district office. AB 389 will facilitate access to lang hospital language access policies by ensuring that they are located online or accessible to the public. There's no opposition, and this bill has received no no votes throughout the process. I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Members, to bear discussion on this item, to bear discussion. Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Bates. Aye. Bell. Aye. Berryhill. Aye. Block. Aye. Canella. Aye. De Leon. Fuller. Aye. Gaines. Aye. Galgioni. Aye. Glazer. Aye. Hall. Aye. Hancock. Aye. Hernandez. I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Wesso, Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, Monning, I Morlock, I Morell, I <coughs> Wynn, I Nielsen. I Pan, I Pavley, Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Walk. Walk I. Senator Pan moves a call. Members, the next five items are five. I oh, Senator Stone, for what purpose do you rise? Thank you for purposes of introduction, Mr. President. Sure, without objection. Thank you, sir. In attendance today, my, my friends uh, on the Senate floor is a group of student pharmacists from the Student Pharmacist Advocacy Coalition of the University of Pacific Thomas J. Long School of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. These students are very interested with legislation and perhaps we can convince them one day to work on this floor. So please, if you would, welcome the students here from the University of Pacific up in the gallery. Welcome to Senator Stone's guest. Senator Leno, for a purpose your eyes. Thank you, Mr. President. Under uh, motions and resolutions, please. Without objection. Uh, I would, at the author's request, ask that AB 801, item 254 today, be moved to the inactive file. Such will be the order. Senator Canella. Thank you, Mr. President. Under motions and resolutions, uh, please move file item 121, SB 296, to the inactive file. Without objection. Members, we're back to assembly third reading. The next five items member, members are file item 200, Senator McGuire, 207, Senator Wykowski, 213, Senator Vidak, 212, Senator Anderson, 214, Senator Allen, and 215, Senator Hill. So beginning with file item 200, Senator McGuire. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 564 by Assembly Member Eggman and Ackling to Developmental Services. Senator McGuire. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Members, AB 564 by Assemblywoman Eggman reforms the parental fee program uh, within the Department of Developmental Services to fix discrepancies in how parental fees are calculated. This bill has received no opposition and has received no, no votes. The bill was written in response to a state audit that found the process at DDS uses to assess parental fees to be riddled with unnecessary delays, lack of documentation, incorrect calculations, and insufficient staff interpretations. Uh, Assemblywoman Eggman's bill reforms the program to ensure consistency and fairness
for all parents would respectfully ask for an I vote. Members, to better discussion on this item, to better discussion. Seeing, hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Aye. Anderson? Aye. Aye. Bates? Aye. Aye. Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? Aye. Aye. Block? Aye. Aye. Canella? Aye. Aye. De Leon? Aye. Fuller? Aye. Aye. Gaines? Aye. Galjani? Aye. Aye. Glazer? Aye. Aye. Hall? Aye. Aye. Hancock? Aye. Aye. Hernandez? Aye. Aye. Hertzberg? Aye. Aye. Hill? Aye, Weso. Aye. Aye, Huff. Aye. Aye, Jackson. Lada. Aye. Aye. Leno. Aye. Aye, Leva. Aye. Aye, Lou. Aye, McGuire. Aye, Aye Mendoza. Aye. Aye, Mitchell. Monning. Aye, Aye Morlock. Aye. Aye, Morrell. Aye, Wynn. Aye, Aye Nilsson. Aye. Aye, Pan. Aye, Aye Pavley. Aye, Roth. Aye, Aye Runner. I Stone, I Vidak, I Wykowski, I Walk, Walk I. Jackson. I. Senator McGuire moves the call. Moving on to file item two. File item two oh seven. Senator Wykowski, Secretary, please read. 